So after three YCSs back to back to back, two Cash Tiras win two YCSs, and Sprite wins one. So let's go ahead and dive on into this breakdown. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can climb even higher the 1100 ladder. I'm sorry that I didn't stay up until 2.30 in the morning Eastern time to film what won the Los Angeles YCS. I had started a brand new full-time job today. We're working nine to five. The hours are not too bad, but your boy's definitely tired. So I figured that we would just talk about the breakdown in general. A lot of different decks, top 64 and 32 and 16, all of these events. One that I want to specifically look at is the 250th YCS in Los Angeles. And I made a community post about this and someone who I guess just doesn't like Cash Tira, nothing against that, um, was saying how, oh, it's not a diverse format because there's so many Cash Tiras in the top 16 and blah, blah, blah. And the community post that I had made was talking about how in the top 16 of the 250th YCS in LA specifically, there were 11 different deck types in that top 16. You know why that's important? Because back in hat format at YCS Philadelphia in 2014, there were 11 different deck types. You can make the argument that this format is as diverse, honestly, if not more diverse, than fucking hat format. And I think that that's amazing. Now, the there was, like I said, someone who commented and was like, well, Kastira took up 17 spots and blah, blah, or however many spots it was. They're taking up so many spots and blah, blah, blah. This isn't a diverse format. And in response to that comment, I said, that is true. However, there's always going to be a deck that has the most fucking representation. Like, it's not going to be equal across the board where there's literally 1% of each deck. Like, we, I don't think we've ever in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh seen a top 16 where it's been literally 16 different decks. That just doesn't happen. Even in hat format, there was a highest representation deck in, I think at YCS Philly, it was uh, Karakuri Girgia, and then the second most represented was like hat. So like, there's always going to be a deck that has the highest amount of representation that the majority of players feel is the best deck or that the most amount of players get in to the top 16 with. That's just going to happen. What's significant about that is, well, rather the num how many different decks uh, topped in top 16. What's significant about that is that you don't see this type of diversity very often in Yu-Gi-Oh. Hell, look at last format where tier element was tier zero. You did not see that kind of diversity at all. You saw over 50% representation in like, I think even top 32 when Tier Element Ishizu was the best deck in the room because it was mad consistent. It was busted as hell. If you broke their board and they were like, thank you, Sugar Boo Bear. I'm going to go ahead and just rebuild the board on our turn because it's not just your turn. It's our turn, bitch. And like, there was just no way you could beat the deck and it was toxic and cancerous as hell. You had to either play tier or play a deck designed specifically to beat tier, like Sprite, where you would play anywhere from 12 to 15 hand traps to beat tier. Now, obviously there were a couple Sprite decks, different variations of Sprite. I don't really consider those different deck types in the top 16 because it's still fucking Sprite at the end of the day. If you're running a Sprite engine, like you could argue it's a Sprite deck. Like Sprite Adventure is just an adventure engine with a Sprite engine and you're off to the races and you might throw in some fucking hand traps. Like that's just the way that it is. And so I love the fact that we saw so much diversity. And honestly, I love the fact that Cash Tiro won two of the three 250th YCSs because that just goes to show that the deck is going to get fucking destroyed come May when we get Cyberstorm access. Because if you notice, we tend to get a new uh, ban list with every new core booster set release, or at least around that time. Uh, and on top of that, Sprite won one, I believe, in Bogota, Colombia. I'd have to look back at my community post, but I'm pretty sure it was either the one in Colombia or London. I think it was Colombia. So that goes to show, hey, Sprite has won two YCSs now, uh, one in Peru, one in Colombia. That deck's definitely getting hit. Br uh, branded may get hit. We saw some representation of it at the 250th YCSs. But I don't know if it's high enough to necessarily see it get hit hard. It may get some indirect hits, but I don't know if we're just going to see the band hammer come down on it. Uh, certainly, it's not going to come down on the deck like we saw with Tier Element Ishizu or what we'll probably see with Kashtira because now Kashtira 
minus the 3v3 team YCS, which I just think is fucking idiotic. I, I don't consider 3v3 events, you know, real sense of data. Um, we have two YCS wins for Cash Tira. And honestly, when you watched some of the feature matches and how people were playing Cash Tira, Jesse Cotton, uh, especially just because of how good of a player he is, you know, players aren't necessarily just going for the Arise Heart Pass. You know, uh, some of them are just playing to break boards or they're playing a very simple game state game one uh, to just set up, you know, as many negates and interruptions as they can, whether it's with hand traps, imperm, or rise heart, what have you. At one point, which was actually really funny, uh, his name was uh, Shin Ping. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Uh, but at one point, he had all three of his cash tier arise, heart, arise hearts on the board on the same turn. And it was just hilarious to me. Along with that, something I noticed, which I don't know if it's because like players are in a feature match and they just want to let it play out, but players weren't scooping really fast. And I don't know why, because to me, you're just wasting time on the fucking clock. Specifically, when uh, Xin Ping was going against, I think his first name was Kevin. Um, Kevin was playing Rika Sun Avalon and Xin Ping was playing Cash Tira. And Xin Ping established three Arise Hearts on the board and like a big eye to take the one monster that Kevin had left. And Kevin's just sitting there sh shuffling his hand. And it's like, bro, you ain't got no plays. Scoop, go to the next game. And like, meanwhile, the clock is just ticking down from 45 minutes on down. And it's like, what are you waiting for, bro? And so eventually like the clock actually hit zero and the life points were tied. And Shinping is just like, pass. And I'm thinking, bruh is somehow, some way, Kevin just let Shinping pop off and he's gonna top deck, like, I don't know, an Ukazi and burn for 800 for game or some shit. And like, obviously that's not what happened. Shin, uh, Shinping banished whatever card Kevin tried to summon or something. I don't know what it was. Um, but like, Kevin just had to scoop. And like, literally, I think it was like a solid three or four minutes went by, Shinping is just popping off. And I'm like, why are you not scooping? Like, this is game three. Like, just scoop and be done with it. Now, for those of you who don't know what the time rules are in like a top, not like a regular round, but like a top 32, top 16 situation, once you get to the end of match, you then go basically into sudden death. So like, if Kevin would have drawn a Mu Yan Curry and gained 200 fucking life points, he would have won the ball game if uh, Xin Ping had no negate uh, for the Mu Yan Curry. So maybe that's what Kevin was waiting on, but then other players were doing it too. And I'm like... Is it because these dudes are in a feature match or is it just because they want to let it play out so that Konami can say, okay, that shit needs to be banned. That shit needs to be hit. I don't know why. Like, I think I literally saw a feature match where there was 15 minutes left on the time clock and they played it out all the way to like fucking seven minutes left. And I'm like, bro, you could have scooped back when the clock was 15 minutes. You had no lines of play. You had nothing to do to break his board. Why are you still playing this out? So I, I don't know, just shit like that infuriates me because I already feel like the live stream event coverage is so fucking slow. And I, I, I don't know why players aren't just like trying to play faster. Now I get in feature matches, they have the judges sitting there. They need to make sure that they're keeping um, a fair game state. So obviously the judges may have to pause the game state, make sure that what's happening is correct. That could potentially slow the game down too. But like, if that's not the case at all, like, man, scoop up your cards, go into your side deck, just play the damn game, man. Like, man, I would honestly, honestly, I'd rather watch a Mystic Mind Mirror match because that's basically what you're doing at that point. Like, if you're in a feature match, th this is to all you future players who might get a feature match. I've never had one. I would love to get one. I've just never had the opportunity. Plus, I've only ever been to like two YCSs here in Florida. Um, and one in Georgia. We hardly ever get YCSs over here. If you're in a feature match and you know you're going to lose, just scoop them up. Don't waste time on the clock. I get maybe your nerves are getting to you because it's a feature match. Just act like it's just another, like, YouTube match that, like, you're playing in at your locals. Like, don't even, just ignore the cameras. Like, it don't even matter. You know, just go in. They start popping off. You know you're going to lose. Scoop. Save time on the clock. You got your ass beat in that game. Go to the next game and you'll 2-0 their ass. It don't matter. So... Uh, that, that was just something that was really bothering me. Like, this is why I hate watching feature matches unless it's like the finals because I can't sit there for hours on end watching dudes just arise hard after arise hard or runic naturia after runic naturia and they're just so fucking slow. And like, I'm not saying these players are slow playing, but it's just, that was the biggest thing for me out of watching the live stream this weekend was just, it was so fucking slow. And it's like, 
People complain that Yu-Gi-Oh is all about combo, 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 summon all these big beat sticks. Bruh, have you watched live streams? Have you seen, look at me, have you seen how slow that shit is? I'd rather go touch grass. I'd rather go mold my lawn. I'd rather go hug a tree. I'd rather have fun with this Ultra Ball as I drop my uh, Zelda certificate of authenticity that I paid a lot of money for. I'd rather play with my Ultra Ball. Like, honest, I'd rather do anything else in my life. So other than that, the deck breakdown was absolutely fantastic. Um, I love seeing all these different decks doing well. It goes to show how healthy of a format it is. The more diverse it is, the better. Um, and on top of that, just the more decks that are viable, the more people can have fun with the game in Yu-Gi-Oh, especially if they're on a budget. You don't have to pay out a bunch of money to play cash here. You don't have to pay out a bunch of money to play Sprite, the Adventure Engine, whatever. You could put three structure decks together of Trap Tricks, go to a regional, and if you're decent enough at this game, you'll get your invite, Sugar Boo Bear. Like that, that's how it is right now. Do we still need a ban list? Yes. Should Cash Tira be hit? Yes. Sprite needs to get kicked in the nuts a little bit too. So there are things that need to be cleaned up that will hopefully be cleaned up moving on into Cyberstorm access when we get time running Morganite so that you can activate and start drawing two cards at your draw phase and get two normal summons or sets a turn. And then we'll also get Mana Dome. I don't know if Mana Dome is going to be all that good. And then we'll get Purely, which I'm still testing with. And it just seems like it's fucking garbage to me. I don't get the hype behind it. It just, it seems like every the way I try to test that deck, I just end up getting my shit pushed in. It seems really trash to me. Maybe I'm just missing something. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.